How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm gonna be discussing how you can legally transport firearms in the state of California. Although I am a licensed and practicing attorney in the state of California, this in no way is legal advice. My goal with this video is just to give you guys some foundational knowledge on what exactly California's laws say about how to transport firearms. So as a general rule, the best practice is always to transport a firearm unloaded in a locked container. So a lot of questions that come out of this is what exactly is unloaded? So let's look at what exactly unloaded means. So unloaded actually means that there is no ammunition either in the handgun, in the firearm, or attached to the handgun or firearm. So for example, I have my Glock 19 right here. It is unloaded, this magazine is empty, safety check. So for the purpose of California, as long as there is no ammunition um, contained inside or attached to this handgun, this handgun is considered unloaded. As you can see, there's no ammunition actually inside this magazine. So even if the magazine is attached to this firearm like this, there is no ammunition either inside this magazine or inside this firearm. And we'll cover ex what exactly lock containers are in a second. But for example, I have this container here. I could actually have this handgun like this. It doesn't, with the magazine attached to it, no ammunition in it. There's no ammunition actually contained inside the slide either. I can transport this firearm like this. Also for the purposes of transporting a firearm in California, Let's say I did have ammunition in this magazine. As long as this magazine is not affixed to this handgun, I can still transport this magazine with this handgun. So let me clear that up. A lot of people say, if there's ammunition in this magazine, I cannot transport this handgun and this magazine in the same container, in the same lock container. A lot of people say it would be violation of California law to transport a firearm in this manner even though the magazine with the ammunition is not affixed to the handgun. That is incorrect. You can transport the handgun with a loaded magazine in this same lock container because the magazine is not attached to the actual firearm. If this magazine were attached to this firearm, or let's say I had a round actually chambered in the handgun, then I would be violating California's transportation laws. But for the purposes of the language, there is no ammunition actually inside the handgun or affixed to the handgun. Therefore, I can transport this handgun with the magazine, whether unloaded or loaded in the same container. The only caveat with that, which I keep harping on because I'll get a lot of questions about it, is the magazine cannot be attached to the handgun if it has ammunition in it, but it can be in the same lock container. So for a quick summary, unloaded means that there is no ammunition actually in the firearm or attached to the firearm. Unloaded does not mean that you do not have any ammunition or magazine anywhere near the firearm. People who say that you cannot transport a firearm in the same container with ammunition or with a magazine is incorrect. Simply, there just can be no ammunition either in the chamber in the magazine which is attached to the firearm or there can be no ammunition actually in the cylinder of say like a revolver. So next let's look at what exactly is a locked container. A locked container means it is something that is fully enclosed and prevents the access to the firearm. And the container is locked if it is locked with a padlock, a key lock, some sort of combination lock or other locking device which can be defined in penal code section 16850. There are specific uh, definitions of actual locking devices under that penal code if you want to like to go take a look for yourself. So for a first example of what exactly a lock container is, you can see I have this uh, metal lock container here. It has a key lock on here, a, a key opens and closes it, but it is fully enclosed and it has a locking device. This qualifies as a lock container. Now I've seen a lot of confusing discussion about, well, does the lock container have to be metal? Does it have to be plastic? Can it be fabric? Things of that nature. What exactly is the material? Under California law, the language does not specifically define what type of uh, material the lock container has to be. Therefore, it does not have to be a metal container. It can be any type of material that you want. So, for example, I have this soft case here for my rifle. This would qualify as a lock container as long as I put some sort of locking mechanism on these two little zippers here and actually lock these in place so that it could not be accessed this would qualify as a locked container. Another example of a qualifying locked container would be your simple um, box that you get with a firearm that you purchase or a handgun that you purchase. For example, I bought a Glock 26. This case came with the Glock 26. This would qualify as a locked container as long as I put some sort of locking device on it that prevented the access to the firearm. So if you hear out there that it has to be some sort of metal or hard case, that is not true. It just has to be fully enclosed 
to prevent the access and there must be some sort of locking device on it. So the next issue that comes up is a lot of people ask, well, do glove boxes and utility departments qualify as a locked container? Specifically under this language in California, those type of compartments do not qualify as locked containers. There are multiple sections in the penal code in California's penal code that expressly prohibits someone from storing a firearm or transporting a firearm in a glove department or a utility box. Those do not qualify as a locked container. As a general rule, do not transport firearms, handguns, any type of firearm in those type of compartments. They do not qualify as a locked container. Another question that comes up a lot is, what about a trunk? Does a trunk qualify as a locked container? A trunk only counts one if it can be locked and cannot be accessed from the inside of the vehicle. For example, I drive an SUV. An SUV technically under the language of California law does not have a trunk because the rear of the SUV can be accessed from other compartments of the interior of the vehicle. An interesting issue that arises out of this is some vehicles may have a trunk, or technically a trunk, but the trunk can be accessed through maybe a drop down portion of the rear. In California, that would not qualify as a locked trunk because you can access it through the interior of the vehicle. If you have some sort of drop down, your safe bet would be to also put the firearm that you're storing in the trunk in some sort of container and lock that container as well. Do not rely just on the trunk because under the language of California, you might run into an issue where they say, well, you could actually access the firearm or you could access the trunk through the interior and therefore it is not considered a locked container. So I've been talking generally about storing all firearms unloaded in a locked container. There are some nuances on specific types of firearms, so let's talk about that. Handguns and pistols have to be transported unloaded in a locked container at all times. So that is your rule for handguns and pistols. This is different from shotguns and rifles. They do not have to be in a locked container. They can be in a container out of plain view, but they don't have to be locked. Now I want to take a quick pivot because some of you might actually ask about registered assault weapons. I understand that these type of rifles are not actually assault weapons, but in California there was a law that was passed where individuals would have to register specific rifles as assault weapons. So some of you might have registered your rifles as assault weapons. In the state of California, you have to transport assault weapons at all times unloaded in a locked container. With the transportation of registered AWs, you can only transport those AWs to and from specific locations. For example, you can transport them from your home to your FFL, you can transport them from the FFL back to your home, you can transport them from your home to a gun range, you can transport them from a gun range back to your house, but it's only these to and from locations. There are specific locations that you can transport them to. I'm not gonna list all the locations, but there are specific places that you can transport those AWs to and from. The language in California is very strange. It creates these weird gray areas, these weird loopholes, these nasty um, areas where you may get caught up on. So my recommendation, my general recommendation is if you are transporting a registered AW, make sure you're only going to and from um, approved locations. Don't do random stop offs. Don't just throw the rifle in your car and make multiple stops. Make sure you're going from point A to B. The next area I want to cover is transporting firearms within defined school zones. So here federal law would actually apply, not the state of California's laws. Federal law requires that all firearms within specific school zones be unloaded in locked containers. So if you're transporting a firearm and you're within the range of a school zone, they must be unloaded in a locked container. So here you can see why there are various factional scenarios that could apply and, and there are certain areas here that might blend together. For example, you may be transporting a rifle and think that um, you can transport that rifle just unloaded in a container, but it doesn't have to be locked. Well, if you enter into a school zone or the area of a school zone while you're transporting that firearm, you then fall under the federal laws and it must be actually locked. So federal law actually defines school zones as any area within a thousand foot um, of the school grounds of a K through 12. So that is specifically is the school zone uh, definition. It's a thousand feet of a K through 12 school. So last, let's look at what is the penalty for violating these transportation laws in the state of California. Most criminal charges involving firearms in the state of California are considered wobblers. The prosecutor is actually granted the discretion of charging you with either a misdemeanor or a felony. If you're charged with a misdemeanor, the penalty can be up to a year imprisonment in jail or a fine up to the amount of $1,000. When charged with a felony, the penalty can be up to three years in jail and up to $1,000 in fines. So for both of these, it's an and or. They can charge you with jail time, 
or a fee, jail time, and a fee. It, it's really up to the discretion of the prosecutor. If you actually are convicted of a felony, that then affects your ability to purchase firearms down the road. So that's why I always recommend you be very cautious when you're transporting firearms. So that's a quick summary of transporting firearms in the state of California. If you have any specific questions, go ahead and write down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you found this video helpful or you find my videos helpful in general and you would like to support the channel, the best way to do that is to join my Patreon and I'll put a link down the details to my Patreon page. Another way you can support the channel is using the various affiliate links down in the description. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, a nation that draws a great distinction between its scholars and its warriors, while its laws are by cowards and its wars for their fools.